Okay. Hey. Right. I'll check that later then. All right. Cool. Um, my ear itches. Ah. That's a problem. There's a problem. Okay. Awesome. I think... Uh, <sighs> sure. Let's do it. Episode... 16? 16. Cool. We got this. Here we go. All right. Hello, Three, Facebook. Two. <laughs> There's nobody there. It's true. <laughs> Hey, real estate hustlers, welcome to episode 16 of the Real Estate Hustle. Uh, guys, if you're listening on uh, the podcast app, on Google Play, on Stitcher, if you're on YouTube, make sure to please press click with your mouse. Hola, Alma. Uh, hit that subscribe button, please, guys. Those subscriptions mean a lot to us. And please make sure to be sharing this with your friends, anybody who can benefit from this, really anybody That's in, everybody. A, in a sales career. That's so, everybody. And uh, we are broadcasting live today from our studio in Rexburg, Idaho, with our cool new podcast desk. Yeah. I hope you guys can appreciate that for those who are watching. Buenos Nachos, Bob Canyon. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Uh, anyway, shout out to our listeners. Get this. I know. I, I, I'm excited for this one. Enlighten me. Enlighten me. Yeah, this is crazy. Singapore. Singapore. We've got a group of listeners in Singapore who have been watching every episode. That is really so, cool. So shout out to our people in uh, in Thank Singapore you. and That's shout out right. to our people in Rigby. We have people watching in yes. Rigby right now. Yes. So uh, today I'm here next to Travis as always. Yeah. How's Travis today? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. We're having a good day. It's great to be here. Love the new changes in the studio. There's more coming. Oh, there's Stay a tuned. lot of cool changes, It's going to be fun. going to yeah. be fun. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So hey guys, we have been covering the customer service experience this entire well, month. Well, if you're so good about customer service, you didn't let me finish. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> don't want to cut you off. There you, you know go. Lesson bad. learned. So, uh, so I thought this was our last week of customer service. It's not. I know. I looked at the calendar. Yeah. Apparently, there's a 31st of January. When did that happen? Little did we know. Wow. So anyway, we are going to do a bonus week of customer service, guys. We, That's uh, right. We have a, another week of customer service. Uh, but today is going to be kind of a, a cool podcast. First, let's review what we've learned this month so far. Uh, we've gone over what uh, the first week in January, we talked about giving your clients the Disneyland experience. Yeah. Do you remember what that kind of was all about? Just really wowing them and giving them the experience that they can walk away with, just feeling they got connected and something that just really hit home to them. Yeah. Yep. Totally. So, yeah. and then we talked about the future of real estate, where things are headed, what trends are looking like, uh, the future of what a brokerage is going to look like. Mm. Your traditional brick and mortar guys, you're can, not going to see too many of them here in the future. Can and, you say the word Battlestar Galactica? Yes. Because that's what's happening. Can you say bears eat beets? No. Okay. All right. But we won't make things are changing. References. They're getting. Uh, they're going down the road. Yes. Yep. Yeah. We talked about uh, joining a new movement in real estate, guys. Last wow. week we talked all about that, which was, uh, which was taking a step, taking a huge leap forward, actually, in real estate and moving with the trends, not being scared of change, mm-hmm. and uh, and adapting to change. So, and then today we're excited for today because it's all kind of a storytelling session about yeah. things that yeah. that uh, that we've learned over the years as we have been in real estate. We're not perfect, um, and, and we're going to share exactly how we are not. Yeah. So, and we'd love to hear your guys' stories as well. It's kind of a confessional today of uh, mm-hmm. of things that that we've done, yeah, and also some successes. That's right. So we're going to cover both, but customer service definitely an important topic. And uh, and then next month, uh, which is not next week, but next month is all about social media. Huge changes in the social media world. I've oh, yeah. uh, been following the trends closely uh, of, of social media, and there's been some big changes, big algorithm uh, algorithm changes in Facebook recently that are, well, they're actually going to be taking effect in February. So it's going to be a great month to be covering it because being noticed and being found in Facebook is going to be getting a lot harder. Mm. So we'll go over that next month. So stay tuned. Yeah, perfect. You know, as we have grown and developed in our own business, we found many things that we are great at, Mm -hmm. you know, and we've had to learn to be great at. They didn't just show up on the doorstep. We've had to work hard towards them. But, you know, even amongst our successes and the things that we do very, very well, we have learned a lot. Mm -hmm. We've learned a lot through this and and we've, we've, had a moment to kind of reflect on some of the uh, 
the wins, the losses, uh, some of the things that we've experienced as uh, in our own business ourselves. And uh, you checking your pulse on this? No, sorry. <laughs> I just got a text from my wife. Uh-oh. So, uh, yeah, but <laughs> she said, I'm pretty sure Addie, who's our daughter, fell asleep in front of the door up to her room. So she's trying to figure oh. out how to get in the room. All right. So, well, anyway, just... Sorry, distracted. <laughs> Technology. Take the hinges off the door. That's right. So we're going to talk today. We just want to share some thoughts with you, some experiences that we had about the wins, the losses that we've had, uh-huh. what we've learned from them, because we're all evolving and changing. And in your business, you're going to find the same thing. One thing I have learned is to not discount an opportunity. Don't yeah, don't totally. throw your own thoughts into it, your own opinions of it as a win or a loss because you don't know. Yeah, so in true. fact, I remember – in fact, here's one right here. Okay. I, this is not in the script. I'm just going to tell oh, this one. This is exciting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, there was a first-time buyer that I was showing a home to. This was some years ago, uh-huh. and they had a list of about, of about four homes they wanted to look at. And so we started looking at these homes. The last one on the list that they wanted to see, I knew was just a a rough house. Mm -hmm. To say the least, it was a rough, rough house. It had been torn apart. It had been old. It was built in the 1930s or 40s. Just an old, old house that needed so much work. And I thought they would never even go there. Not even consider it. So we're looking at these other homes, nicer homes, newer homes, and we're going through with everything. And they said, well, I told them, I said, look, guys, this last home, I, I just think it's over your head. I don't think it's going to be worth it. They said, no, we, we want to go look at it anyway. I said, all right. Got my attitude on, right? Going, all right. <laughs> we're going to go show you this house. Fine. Why not? Let's do this. The whole nine yards. Well, we got to this home. I pulled up. I said, look, guys, see the roof? See the overgrown weeds? See the front door hanging by a hinge? Probably looked terrible. It, lo- it was rough. Oh, man. They walked in and said, we love it. And they bought wow. it. They bought it. Last floor, last door. Yes. And so that was, a, that was an experience for me. Not to judge or put my opinion where it's not asked for. Yeah, totally Because true. you never know. My father told me once, and this sounds kind of funny. I hope I can say this on on live air, but he says, you know, when it comes to the car sales world, there's a butt for every seat. Yeah. There's – everybody will will fit somewhere Uh in a car. Yeah. Don't – don't don't judge the situation. So I learned that this experience. So that's one thing that I learned with showing these homes to these first-time buyers is don't don't judge because – what you think is right may not be. So that's one experience that I learned. Yeah. Okay. Totally. There, there's others too, but yeah. Yeah. Real, real quick. I totally forgot, guys. I, I have to do a couple plugs before we move on, which which I forgot to do. Uh, first of all, guys, our book is coming out. We're really oh, excited yes. for that. Yes. Um, we are getting the first physical copy. It just shipped yesterday to us. But awesome. We don't have it yet. It just left the publisher. So mm. uh, anyway... That's exciting. So probably here within the next few weeks, we'll actually have that uh, on all the different sales channels. We'll get you guys copies of that. Absolutely. <laughs> and then also our webinar that we keep talking about, we're getting really close, guys. We actually ended up writing two more books for you guys. Why not? Um, so we are, we're, we're finishing those up right now, getting those edited, which is why the webinar has kind of been drawn out a little bit longer than we'd hoped. We want this to be good. We want it to be beneficial. Right. We want it to be awesome for you guys. Um, so anyway... I just forgot to do that plug, so I needed to go do that uh, real fast. Um, but uh, but okay, so let's go back to our storytelling. All I right. just didn't want to forget to do that. But let's go. I guess we put the real names, but we won't say them. Let's talk no, about yeah. the Smiths. Yeah. So the Smith transaction, right? Okay. <laughs> That's right. This is a situation. Not the Smiths. Uh, it isn't. It isn't the Smiths. But we have uh, we had a family that was uh, moving for a job situation out of state, mm-hmm. and we had the opportunity to to list their home. Mm-hmm. Um, we told them how great and wonderful we are, and backed it up with information and history and examples and and charts and graphs and all the neat things that they wanted to see. Again, everyone's a little different as to what right. information you need to share with them. These people were detailed, and so we gave them what they asked for. So mm-hmm. we got the listing. Is exciting. Happy, good moment. Got started, did all of our all of our uh, videography, all of our picture taking, all of our high-definition photos, all the stuff that we do. We made everything great, did everything we told them mm-hmm. that we're going to do. We did everything just right. Mm-hmm. We had good communication with them. Very, very nice people. We're pretty nice guys. Yeah. I think the whole thing was really, really well. Yeah. I thought so too. Yeah. I totally thought so. But for whatever reason, the buyers were just not paying attention to this house. Yeah. And there was a for sale by owner right next door and they would contact me texting, why isn't my home sold? Why is that 
for Sal Bayona getting the showing and I'm not. Why this? Why that? I'm disappointed. They would send these kind of messages out, which I can understand why. You know, they're they're trying to feel they're anxious. They're anxious. Yeah. They want to get down the road. Yeah. They've got a home they want to buy out of state. They got this one here they're dealing with, and so forth. And so, here we are in a situation where we're doing everything right. <laughs> We've done everything we told them we would do, and we're doing it very very well. Their home's not selling, and they're anxious about things. Eventually, the home did sell. It took a lot longer than we thought. Yeah, it yeah. really did take a while. But the thing is, you know, this home had a had a canal in the back, yeah. and little kid or families with little kids struggled with that scenario. Yeah. And so, even though we went above and beyond, great communication, great uh, photography, great marketing, price was right, everything lined up just right. They just weren't happy. That they just weren't happy with us, and and that's one lesson I learned is is just sometimes it's not our fault. Yeah. We can do everything just right, everything down the line, and still can't please everybody. Yeah. And here's the funny thing. Okay. Three months, four months later after all this happened, uh, they showed up at my father-in-law's house one Sunday afternoon when we were all there for Sunday dinner. Mm-hmm. And I remember I was in the kitchen, and they walked by, and somebody waved at me. I'm like, who's, who's that? They look kind of familiar, but who was it? Because <laughs> it had been a few months since we talked to these folks. Yeah. They were there for three or four hours on another side of the living room from where I was. I didn't even recognize them. I didn't even know they were there until they stood up to leave. I'm like, wait a minute. Isn't that the Smiths? <laughs> and I ran over there. Guys, how you doing? How long have you been here? And oh, we've been here three or four hours. I'm like, oh, jeez. <laughs> That's embarrassing. <laughs> oh, jeez. So here they are, not ecstatic ex- about the performance of right. the sell their home. And now they, and feel they like, show up to your in laws. And I'm ignoring them, <laughs> not knowingly, right? Lesson oh, learned. Boy, we, oh, my gosh. We kind of hit, we kind of crashed and burned on that one. Yeah. Not again our fault, but nonetheless. These things happen, and they're expected to happen. Yeah, so put in the comments, guys, if you guys have an experience <laughs> like that where you're doing everything right, everything you could possibly be doing, yeah. and you just cannot satisfy them, uh, let us know in the comments if that's ever happened to you. I'm assuming it's happened to just about everybody out there. I'm so, guessing. Yeah. I'm guessing. What are your thoughts? Have you had well, okay, so I, I've got one. Uh, okay. I think we touched on this. I think we actually wrote about them in our book. Mm. These these are famous clients. Okay. Um, <laughs> anyway, this was this is a story. We're going to call them um, uh, Jack and Jill. Jack and Jill. Jack and Jill. Okay. And they were uh, they contacted us. They were previously working with another realtor. Had an offer on a home. It was a, mm. a new build, and then the mm. build ended up horrible. I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah, and Greg's yeah. in the background laughing yeah. because, yeah. <laughs> because right. we know these clients all too well. But anyway, we love them. No, in, in all honesty, they're fantastic people. But here are the lessons that we learned from it. Right. So they were working with another realtor. The realtor was just not performing. They were really unhappy. And, uh, and so they contacted us and said, hey, can you guys help us? Absolutely, of course we can. We're going to give you that Disneyland experience. It's going to be great, smooth, seamless, all the way to the end. And, and uh, we did. We gave them yeah, the Disneyland experience. We, we took really them, did. We took them for rides all over. We did, <laughs> literally. So um, so in the very first showing with them, uh, I, I learned a very important lesson not to say something that I said. Uh-oh. So... Um, but I don't think I don't know if anybody else will take it to the extreme that they did, but maybe so. So uh, just pay attention to what you say. So in our very first showing that we had with them, um, you know, we were chatting. I was just you know kind of just buttering them up a little bit, just letting them know we're going to take great care of them. We're here to you know do everything we can to find you guys the right home. And I said this: we will show you as many homes as you need to see oh to boy. find the right one. Oh boy. That came back to haunt us. You didn't put an expiration on that. I did not put an expiration on it. In reality, fine. Like, yes, <laughs> that's our job is to show them homes. Um, after probably the first 60 homes that uh, I showed them, uh, I think, did I did I pitch them off to you and whoa. say, hey, Travis, will you, can you take a stab at it? Because I you can't did. seem to, to find did. them a home after 60 a, a few of us in the office took turns. Yeah, so Travis yeah. took a turn. Mm-hmm. Greg, we, then we passed them off to Greg. Mm-hmm. Um how many did you show them? Hundreds. Several hundred homes. We don't normally do this. No, several hundred homes Greg showed them. And then, and then we decided to give our Idaho Falls agent a shot at it. She showed them several hundred more homes. Uh, we kept track, guys. 
It, by the end, we were close to a thousand homes that we showed this family once in a lifetime. Before they ended up buying one. So, yeah. Um, yeah. so anyway, I, I I have made sure, and we actually developed a whole rule that we we talk about in our new book. Uh, we call it the seven out of ten rule. It was somewhat developed because of our experience with these guys. Um, so it's, but basically, we just need to have the talk when we're when we're first working with buyers that hey. The perfect home doesn't exist. That's what these people were trying to find. It's the home that checked every single box on their list, which is why they couldn't find it because the perfect home doesn't exist. Right. And it only took them about a thousand homes to realize that they had to compromise a little well, bit. Well, and the problem is once you get started with them yeah. and you get so much investment into them, you don't want to cut them loose because at any moment they're going to buy a home. Exactly. At any moment they're going yeah. to buy a home. At any moment they're going to buy a home. <laughs> That's and, is what we kept thinking. Yeah. And so <laughs> they, they did yeah. eventually buy a home though, which yeah. was good. It was so, a good lesson learned. Hearts. Good yeah. lesson learned. You know, we'll never do that again. We'll set the boundaries, set the stage. We've come up with a lot of uh, uh, safety mm -hmm. features from keeping that from happening again. Yeah. But what a what an amazing thing! It was an interesting journey with them, yeah. but but definitely a lesson learned that we need to have that that uh, conversation up front. That we need to be realistic with our goals and realistic with the uh, with finding the perfect home and. Um, and so we started doing that. We've developed this rule. Uh, we talk about it in our book. We talk about it in our academy. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we'll mm -hmm. even no, nah, this it won't pertain to our webinar. But um, but anyway, so yeah. make sure to have those conversations early on with your buyers and let them know, guys. You know, set the stage. Perfect home isn't out there. If we can find a home that checks seven of the ten boxes of your must-haves, we're doing pretty good. That's right. And that's a home worth making an offer on. So I agree. Um, <laughs> anyway, but yeah, bless their hearts. They're fantastic people. They're finally in their home. They uh, they're doing some renovations to get it to their perfect home, and uh, and we're excited for them. But, That's but we definitely learned a lesson and used a lot of gas. I think our commission <laughs> check maybe paid for our fuel. Maybe there, not Greg's though. There you go. So because he go. runs premium, and learned a lot there. Had, had, and, yeah, <laughs> had a good experience. Learned a lot of things. Yeah, we sure I'll, did. I'll tell you, you know, there's another uh, time that I had where uh, there was a company looking for a commercial building, and I don't know if this has happened to any of you or not, but. Here you are, again, doing all the right things, staying in touch, right, yeah. communicating with them, showing them what they need to see. Mm -hmm. In fact, you show up two or three times to the same building because in a commercial scenario, sometimes they'll have their uh, – they're, they're, they're kind of their, um, what, their bushwhacker, you know, right? The guy that's going out just just looking at, looking for opportunities. Okay. And then they bring the HR guy in. Then right. the president of the company comes in. Then you have all these people that need to see it one, two, three, five, seven times. Yeah. So here you are looking at these uh, commercial properties, rental properties, whatever. And we were on that side of things where we were showing this uh, company multiple properties multiple times. We mm -hmm. had a great relationship with them. Anytime they needed something, boom, we were there kind of yeah. like a like a pop tart, right? Right. And and we did everything we should have done. Well, Dad got sick. I had to go out of town for a weekend. Mm -hmm. I came back to find that they bought one of the buildings that I had shown them like twelve, 12 times. times. That's right. <laughs> now, <sighs> the lesson there, having having those buyer representation agreements would have been very critical at that point. I happen to err on the side of trust, but in yeah. today's world, maybe we got to <clears throat> do a better job of outlining, setting the stage, and, and locking them in because that was a lesson I learned where I was just more trusting than I should have been. You know, and it's hard because we... Us personally, we don't like buyer rep agreements. We hate them actually because we don't ever the, – the discussion we have with our buyers and we feel like you guys should also be having with your buyers is we're not going to lock you into using us. We want to earn your trust. We want to earn your business. And if we don't, then you're free to go, which it's really, really uh, – I mean 1% – uh, people ever we, leave yeah and, and it's not because they're unhappy with us it's usually because of a scenario like this where one of us leaves town and uh, yeah. so anyway yeah. but but yeah having those buyer rep agreements are, are good but at the same time we do like to trust people we like to do business yeah. on a handshake but every once in a while we get burned sometimes stinks. it happens and, yeah. and that's what happened here I, I tell my clients look yeah, we can sign a buyer representation agreement. And some people I've done that with, yeah. but a lot of times I just say, look, if I'm giving you 110%, I only expect 100% back. And that's what you can expect with me. Mm -hmm. And so I really do rely on the trust factor. Now, yeah. we've got to set the buyer representation agreements up when we sign offers and things. But, right, yeah. but generally, we, we have a, a level of trust there that we try to instill. Mm -hmm. I will say that we lose very, very few in a year. Yeah. But that's one situation that maybe could have been avoided if we just – did a little more due diligence with certain people. So maybe the lesson learned, I guess, is on these higher ticket buildings, because this was a big, big commercial building, yeah. uh, big commission lost, which, you know, it just was one of those things that happens. But 
so maybe on these bigger, higher ticket items, we do have those agreements in place. And good but, idea. I don't know, guys. Let us know yeah. what your thoughts are. Have you yeah. ever run into that situation? And do you guys currently use buyer rep agreements? I'm curious. Let yeah. us know. Chime in in the comments. That's right. Um, should we talk about the log home? Yeah. Oh you know, my the, gosh. The log home. That was a, that was probably a uh, yeah. That that's iconic. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Here we go. I got a phone call one day. This was uh, probably a good two years ago. <clears throat> this lady called me. Uh, bless her heart. Very sweet lady. Once again, um, a little bit different, which was fine. There's different people out there. There are. Um, so she called me and said, "Hi, is this Rick with Team Green?" Yeah, this is Rick with Team Green. Awesome. Okay. Well, this might sound weird, but Venus that's just your, that's your key. That's your key, right, <laughs> right. there. She said like so, something to the extent of. Venus just passed Mars, mm. and because of that, it was an indication that I need to sell my home. And I actually started laughing because I thought she was joking. True story. And, and, and which I felt bad when I realized that she was dead serious. I'm just like, <laughs> oh, okay, all right, cool. So can you explain that again? Yeah, Venus passed Mars, which means I need to sell my home. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, let's okay. let's talk about this. And she said, well, you know, it's a very unique home, which it was. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've done a lot of unique things to it, and. Um, it appraised for three hundred and fifty, but I really want to list it for seven hundred thousand because where these two planets just passed each other, it's a uh, Shanghai Zen. Yet I, I don't know some weird term that she used. Um, Shanghai noon. Shanghai noon. <laughs> yeah, was, I, I can't read. I wish I would have written it down because it was really interesting. I should have researched actually what it was. She said, "I know we can get this much money for it." And I'm just like, I'm sitting here scratching my head. I'm like. Appraised at three fifty, you want to sell it for seven hundred? Why not? Sure, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so I think I I was tied up, so I think I sent you out there to go look at. The I did. I, I went and drove by it. Yeah, yeah Travis mm -hmm. went out there. Actually, we drove out together first, yeah. and uh, it was a, it was a very unique property. It had some ponds on it. Everything was overgrown. The ponds were full of moss. They were gross. Uh, the home needed to be completely sanded and repainted. And I'm just thinking seven hundred thousand dollars, like. Not going to happen. Not in a million years. But she was very insistent on, on doing this. To the point where we thought, well, if we can just at least get her to come down or talk to her about coming down right. or whatever. And she was like, no. No, planets pass this, each other. <laughs> this is it. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, this is doctrine. We, it is 700000 even though it appraised for half. So, anyway, we kind of told her... Thanks, but no thanks. Thanks, but no thanks. Yeah. We did. Yeah. And, uh, and then one of our competitors took the listing... And uh, at the higher price, at the higher price, it was listed at seven hundred, and we saw it. We just we just kind of laughed, mm -hmm. but then within a week, the price started dropping, and then it dropped, and then it dropped, and then it dropped, and then it dropped, and I think it actually sold right around three fifty. <laughs> so yeah, lesson where, learned where we thought it should have been, and, and yeah. we and we backed away because she was like, no, this is it. Yeah. We felt there was no way she would agree to a price reduction schedule. Yeah. Uh, she told us she wouldn't, yeah. so we just kind of backed off and said it's not worth our time. But yeah. Lo and behold, somebody else got the commission from it. So, so yeah, it, yeah. Take take every listing you can get, guys, um, because if it doesn't, st but have that discussion. And this is, I guess, what we learned set the stage. years ago. Mm -hmm. Set the stage once again from the beginning. Okay, if we list it for this insanely high price, we need to be under, you know, un, under the, the, we need to be on the same page that mm -hmm. in a week we need to drop it. If it doesn't sell in another week, we need to drop it because. It was a relatively strong market that year too. So that was right. our mistake. That was something uh, that that we shouldn't have done. We shouldn't have passed that listing up. That was a lot of money we lost because of it. Uh, lesson learned. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. should we should have just uh, set the stage with there, agreed on something rather than just blowing it off and said, "Oh, there's no way." Yeah. We should have at least tried. So lesson learned. Absolutely. Right. Another opportunity that uh, came our way is uh, we are now in the listing with a great, great landowner. This guy's awesome. Oh, such a nice guy. He owns uh, 1,400 acres uh, just uh, about 30 minutes away from us in the beautiful hills and, uh, south of, of, of Rexburg. And um, this is a neat property. Yeah, it really is. Uh, we went out and looked at it. We got to uh, cruise around on a on a side by side out there and go check it out. Uh, Fourteen hundred acres of thick timber and, and rangeland and ponds, beaver ponds, views. We just, actually, we filmed part of our academy there. We did actually. Which is cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a really neat experience. Mm -hmm. And so we've got this really neat listing worth uh, what one point four million. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he also has 75 other acres in, in town, mm -hmm. uh, in, in, the, in another neighboring town close to that. He has 75 acres worth about another 1.5 million. Mm -hmm. 
And he wants to take both of those when they sell and reinvest them to the tune of about just over three million. Mm -hmm. And all because we picked up our phone. Crazy. Isn't that something? Why is that magical to pick up your phone? He told me that. Uh, this guy, we'll call him Steve. Uh, he called me one day and I picked up my phone. Yeah, Steve, hey, we're happy to help you. He says, are you serious? I said, why? Because I have called five other real estate agents. None of them seem to care. They won't return my call. They won't pick up the phone. I said, Steve, we're here for you. We believe in what we're doing. We want to help you. How can we help you today? Well, I've got a $1.4 million uh, ranch I want to sell. We'll be I got, right there. <laughs> I got $1.5 million commercial real estate in the neighboring town I want to sell. Then I want to reinvest it. I'm like, what time can we meet? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, again, the lesson there is, is just pick up your phone. You don't know what's on the other side of it. <laughs> yeah. and, and sometimes you can't pick it up, but call them back as soon as you can. Send them a text. Say, I'll call you right back, whatever. But don't just say, eh, I'll get that later. Right. click you have no idea yeah. what's on the other side a great experience we had there yeah absolutely yeah that really was and um and there's been a ton of interest on that property there has so i don't know why even I'm today gonna... i've yeah. had two calls today wow so crazy. it's it's that good crazy yeah great experience so real quick guys in the few minutes we have left um we want to talk and interact with you guys a little bit right now on the subject of for sale by owners so yeah. um one thing that that we're running into quite a bit is um you know for for decades uh, real estate agents is always have always advertised, hey, free market analysis on your home, free sure. home evaluation. We'll tell you exactly what it's worth. Um, but what we're finding now is that they're using these and uh, you know requesting this information from us, meeting with us, saying awesome, thank you, kiss you on the cheek, and then they go list it for sale by owner for right there. with the with the description, with the price, with everything, all the details that you gave them, and they're saying cool. All right, see you later. Thanks, thank appreciate you. it. Thanks for all your info. So. Um, has anybody else run into that situation? Curious. Yes. Yeah. How, how are you protecting yourself from wanting to be helpful mm -hmm. and, and not stingy with the information, but yet if you give it to them, they're gone? Yeah. How do you balance that? Yeah. And that's, I, I guess that's, you know, it's happened to us several times this year and actually mm -hmm. quite recently, um, very mm -hmm. recently, actually, mm -hmm. we, we, you know, we've done that and, uh, and advertised a home off, you know, off the market and then things haven't really panned out in our favor for that. So I, I think so, there's a document we need to for, uh, have people sign saying, sure, we'll tell you anything you want. Just sign this buyer representation agreement or okay. seller representation seller, agreement yeah. or, or uh, you know, whatever, compensation agreement, and I'll tell you anything you want to know. So are you guys still giving out free market, uh, are, you, are you guys still giving out home valuations for free? Mm -hmm. I'm just curious if you guys are currently doing that. Anybody out there watching, uh, feel free to chime in. Uh, because any more and the way we feel is we need to protect our data more and more and more oh yeah um, and for those of you in non-disclosure states like we are in idaho um you know the zillow all these big websites they don't have our information which is right. very much to our advantage yeah. bigger markets unfortunately the the full disclosure states um you know all these home search websites have all your data which diminishes the value of a realtor um but um, which just means we have to find other ways to add value Right. Um, which we'll talk about a little bit more next month as well in uh, in our social media um, pod podcast month or webinar webinar. Well, yeah. sure, we'll do another webinar yeah. on that too. But anyway, so yeah, guys, let us know. Send us an email. Drop us a line. Put a comment on here. Uh, just what you how you guys are are dealing with that situation currently uh, with the for sale by owners getting used for your information and then having them just go do their own thing, saying thank you, and then you don't get to be a part of it. Right. Um, you know, even though you've spent, you know, a few hours working on information for them. So just curious, uh, please let us know because that's a, a subject that we'd like to touch on a little bit more as well. Yeah. Let us know what you tomorrow, think. But down the road. That's so. right. Yep. <clears throat> Great information today. I think we've talked about some good successes, some good uh, le lessons learned. Let us know what you're thinking. Let us know what your questions are. Um, I think we've got some great opportunities here and we've got some neat things coming up. We do, guys. Um, we will. We were trying so hard to get the, the web, the, the registration webpage is done. It's just, sorry, it's there. It's not finished. So um, close, anyway, so close. we are so close, but we do have two new books written in addition to our other one that's being published right now. Um, so these are just the rough copies of them, but, but they, these are going to be a huge part of changing your guys' business. It's going to be part of the webinar, uh, followed by a masterclass. It's actually the masterclass that you guys will get these books, um, that are going to absolutely redefine you guys, uh, the way that you guys work with, uh, with your clients. Uh, and it's just not real estate, any sort of sales career that anybody's in. These two books are really going to help you out and really open your eyes as to, are you actually providing value with the way you're currently doing your business?
Yep. So um, anyway, make sure we are going to, I say this every week, but next week we will have the link to the registration for the webinar up there. Uh, and then again, that will be followed by a masterclass where we're going to dive really deep into the subject. Uh, and in that masterclass, we're going to just do everything we can to redefine your guys' career as real estate agents, take you to that next level that you need to be at, and just make you guys successful. That is the whole purpose of us doing this, guys. Um, so anyway, absolutely. Well, it's been great. Good, uh, good, good conversation today. Yep. Let's absolutely. wrap things up. Um, I, I think that, uh, you know, they say dynamite doesn't come in big packages. Those are small books with a lot of information. Yep. They really are. Now remember guys, if you watched our podcast last week, you guys need to be starting a movement in your local markets. And one of the things you need to be doing right after we finish this podcast, or at least some point during the week go live on your social media page, your Facebook business yeah. page, and uh, and say hello to your clients. Give them a market update. Our buddy Brady in St. George is doing that. They're putting on a whole show. He actually just called me the other day. He's getting a full studio set up and everything. Perfect. Um, so it's all about adding value. It's all about becoming the expert in your market. So get out there, get live on Facebook, go live on YouTube, wherever your audience is at. And uh, that's what we're doing as soon as we hang up the camera. That's a weird term. but Hang it up. We are going to hang up the camera after this and turn it back on and go live to our real estate audience. So anyway, we encourage you guys to do that. Uh, join us next week again at 3 p.m. on The Real Estate Hustle uh, where we will do another live stream on the customer service experience. It'll be the last week. We'll have the registration for the webinar up there. And uh, I think that's all we got today. I think it's time to get back to work. Yep, your break's over, guys. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you guys next week. Thank you. Thank you, Singapore.